Okay, today we're going to look at a classic elevator problem with Newton's second law. And this is a common problem given to physics students. And so here we're told that a person stands on a scale of elevator and that person has a mass of 60 kilograms. And we want to know what the apparent weight of the person is shown on the scale. So you may not know this, but the way a scale works to show you a weight, it actually measures the force that the scale has to exert back up on you to support you. And we call that force the normal force. So the normal force is indeed the um, apparent weight, and we'll say, we'll call it weight apparent, WA. So normally your weight is given by the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is mass times gravity. All right, so here we're saying that the elevator is not moving. So let's use Newton's second law. F net equals mass times acceleration. If we're not moving, what's the acceleration going to be? Zero. Therefore, this equals mass times zero, which equals zero. And drawing our feet by a diagram here, and let's use blue, I mean, let's go green. Let's be fancy and use green instead, actually. And this free wide diagram is not going to look perfect, but that's okay. And I have force of gravity. And the normal force, which is the apparent weight. Ooh, wow, that's an awful FN there. That's a little better. So the net force set is going to be FN minus the gravitational force, which equals zero. In this case, then, FN equals FG. And FG is mass times gravity. This implies that the apparent weight then Fn equals the mass times the gravity which is 60 times 9.8 and that should give you 588 newtons. So when the elevator is not moving there's no acceleration we know that it is 588 newtons. That's your weight of a person on Earth, and that's what the scale will show. But look, let's look at a case in which now the elevator is accelerating upwards. So now we do have a, an acceleration. So let's write down what we know. We know that the mass is 60 kilograms and the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared and we want to know what the apparent weight is. Well the apparent weight is indeed, once again, we get the normal force is the weight apparent. So let's draw a free body diagram again and we're gonna go ahead and draw this time in red. I'm feeling adventurous. And we have the normal force. The force of scale must exert on us. And also the which is also the apparent weight. And then I have the force of gravity. Now, as I mentioned before, a lot of people like to assume, well, Fn, because it's flat has to equal mg. We said that is not always the case, and this time it is not the case. Always use Newton's second law. So let's go back here and let's write out Newton's second law that says that the net force has to equal the mass times the acceleration. Therefore, the net force, F net, 
has to equal 60 times 2. And 60 times 2 is what? 120 newtons. Very good. And so F net is also equal to, F net, the net force is equal to 120. And F net is the normal force minus the gravitational force. This equals 120. So let's come over here. Let's, so Fn minus Fg equals 120. And Fg is by mg, and g is always what? 9.8. Well, Fn minus mg equals 120. Therefore, the normal force equals 120 plus mg. So Fn equals 120 plus 60 times 9.8. And 60 times 9.8 is 588. So Fn equals 120 plus 588, which equals 708 newtons. All right, so what does this mean? This means that the scale is going to show that you weigh 708 newtons, different than what we when we did the scale when it was not moving, it was 588. Now the apparent weight is now 708 newtons. So it increased. So what do you think would happen if the elevator would be going down? Would the weight continue to increase? Would it decrease? Let's find out. So now, once again, we're on the scale. And the elevator is now accelerating downwards with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So what we know again is that the mass is 60 kilograms. And the acceleration is downwards. Therefore, the acceleration has to be, by convention, Negative. Acceleration has direction. It is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. Do not forget about directions. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and use Newton's second law again. That F net equals mass times acceleration. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the free body diagram again. First on the scale scale Fn, and then the weight of the person. And Fn is the apparent weight. So let's go ahead and do Newton's second law here. We're told that then F net equals 60 times negative 2, which equals negative 120. Oh, newtons, not kilograms. And the F net is also given by the normal force minus the gravitational force. And this, so doing what you get again. Fn minus Fg equals negative 120. Well, we know that Fg is indeed mass times gravity, a true weight. So the normal force then minus the gravitational force equals negative 120, which means that the normal force has to equal negative 120 plus 
the gravitational force and so Fn equals negative 120 plus 60 times 9.8 which equals negative 120 plus 588 which equals 468 newtons. So this means that your apparent weight will be 468 newtons. And I'll bring it over here too, so you can see it better. But yeah, so the apparent weight, Fn, equals 468 newtons, and I'll highlight this one now, make it easier. See? So the apparent weight is less than the actual weight, because the actual weight was 588 newtons. If you're going downwards and accelerating, the apparent weight is going to be 468 newtons. Alright, let's, let's look at another case here. Here we want to know what it's going to look like if it's moving at a constant velocity. So the elevator is moving up at a constant velocity. Now do you think the scale is going to be the true weight? It's going to be higher than the true rate weight, or it's going to be less than the actual weight of the person. So what is the apparent weight? Well, always start out what we know. The mass is equal to 60 kilograms. And the acceleration is zero, right? But moving at a constant velocity, constant velocity, then A has to equal zero. Hmm, this is very similar to when the elevator was not moving. So Newton's second law says F net equals MA, or F net MA, that is equal to F net equals mass times zero, which equals zero, and F net equals the normal force minus the gravitational force. Setting these two equations equal each other, we get Fn minus Fg equals zero. So Fn equals Fg. So Fn equals positive Mg. Might better M there. So Fn equals 60 times 9.8 equals 588 newtons. So moving up and down at constant velocity with no acceleration, the scale is going to show the actual weight. So let's do one more example. This is always a fun one to consider. Let's say that the elevator is suddenly cut. Now the elevator is falling down in free fall motion. What is the weight shown on the scale? Is it going to be less than, more than, or the, the actual weight? Well, Newton's second law always comes in handy. But as always, let's start off what we know. We know the mass is 60 kilograms. The acceleration. Is it acceleration when free fall motion? Of course. All objects in free fall motion fall at the same rate, g, which is negative 9.8, write that a little better there, meters per second squared. Okay, so that is g. So f net equals mg. And we want to know what the normal force is. Remember, we're trying to figure out what the normal force is. So, Fn, Fg, and we want to know what is Fn. Well, Newton's second law, this is the net force, right? So, Fn minus Mg 
equals mass time acceleration, in case the acceleration is gravity, m times g. Well then, when g at g is negative, because g is negative 9.8, so fn equals negative mg plus mg, when negative mg plus mg is 0, so the net force is 0 newtons. Oh, interesting. This means that there is no net, sorry, not net force, the null force is 0, therefore there is no null force acting on the person, therefore the scale in free fall motion, the elevator was falling down, would be 0. You would not weigh anything, and this is why, partly why you feel weightless when you're falling, because you feel your weight from whatever the surface is exerting back on you. So in the elevator, you would feel more heavy, in connotation sense at least, of going up an elevator. If you go in an elevator, do this next time, see when, when the elevator is accelerating up, the initial push up is accelerating, you will feel like you weigh more. And going down, you feel lighter a little bit. And then if the elevator was falling down, you would not feel anything. Just like when you're on falling through the air, if you ever gone skydiving, you feel weightless because there's nothing pushing back up on you. And so that's how you do the classic elevator problem in physics using Newton's second law.